Hello and welcome to this edition of the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Sophie Adenau, the newly appointed French astronaut to the European Space Agency. Hello, welcome to this set, Sophie. Now, first question, this happened yesterday. You've been all over French media because you are French, of course. What does it feel like? Well, hello, um, and uh, well, it, it, it's really a whirlwind. It, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of an incredible thing that's happening. I, I feel so happy. It's been the result of a very long process, that, which gave me a um, very good opportunity alongside with other European um, to, to, to go through this election adventure with the European Space Agency. Um. Did you expect this much attention? Because, I mean, as we all know, Thomas Pesquet, your colleague, is very media savvy and has been a lot on the media. Did you expect this was going to happen, that uh, you'd instantly become a star? Because it's kind of what's happened, right? Yeah, well, I, I could, yeah, I, I kind of expected this kind of thing, although I did not want to go into the feeling of what it feels like because it's the thing you, you live in, you can't really imagine what it is, what it is to go through. Um, and however, I, I, for me, it's really the idea is not becoming a star, but I, I, I'm here to be a scientist and to operate high and in innovative technology on board the space stations alongside with uh, partners from the European Space Agency. So the idea is really um, to become an ambassador. Yes, of course, but not a star. <laughs> your, uh, your family, how did they react? Because you, you, you have a partner, you have a, a son, 10 year old. Uh -huh. how, how did they react? They are very happy for for all this uh, and they know that I've been working hard for all this to happen that um, yes it all started as a little girl's dream but uh, it requires a lot of hard work uh, so we're a very united family and it's as easy as uh, when someone is happy in the family the others are happy too so a lot of work you just said can you can you just walk us through your background uh, how did you get here well, I have a um, scientific background. I uh, studied engineering. I have uh, I graduated in, in from Superhero and have a Master of Science from MIT. Then I, I worked as an engineer at Airbus Helicopter, designing helicopter cockpits. And then afterwards, I joined the French Air and Space Force um, <clears throat> to become a helicopter pilot. I have a, a decade of operational career. I, d I flew rescue and transport missions. And after that, I became a, a test pilot. I did my training in the UK, and I uh, have roughly 3,000 flight hours on 22 different helicopter types. So basically not cracking under pressure is something that, uh, that you should master. You've just been selected. There were 22,589 candidates for this job. And well, you got through, through, through the selection. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about about the selection itself, how, how, how were you chosen? How did it happen? How did you live through that? <laughs> so it, it was a very interesting process where each step was really worth it to get to know each oneself better and to, to, to really try to, to go through better competencies. And so it, it's a long process and very rigorous and methodical process of six um, steps. Um, among these six steps, there are cognitive uh, tests, there are um, tests under pressure, there are psychological tests, which are very important because we are going to live um, with uh, European and other partners in cooperation in a very hostile environment and very close, confined envi environment. So psychological tests are very important. Then there are also medical tests and uh, as well, a lot of panel interviews. What was the toughest thing? Well, for me, I guess the toughest thing was the medical test because they are the one you don't have a clue about. You don't have control at all. I mean, you can be phys physically fit and prepared for this. You can like do a lot of sports, but then you you don't really know what your health is and mm. what they expect from your health to be. So. You just go through this, and for me, it was the toughest thing, I think. Uh, just one thing, you have become a, an expert at, at tests, in a sense. I mean, in a sense, you, you, you did Superhero, which is one of the most prestigious engineer, engineer schools in France. Then MIT, you got into that, which is one of the most you know, sought-after engineering schools in the world. And then ESA and becoming a, an astronaut. So this is a question that's going to interest all the students who are watching. <laughs> Do you have 
a special method to get through exams? Well, my method, I don't know if I have a special method, but my method was um, really to, to work through every little um, aspect and to be very rigorous, not to leave one aspect apart. Uh, one aspect apart. I didn't want to have um, a hole in the tennis racket. I mean, it's it's just, I didn't want to be a champion in one field, but I wanted that in none of the fields I would be like lower than average. Mm. And so it's really the balance um, that I tried to 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 reach. Um, the other aspect also is to just to keep the stress level uh, low enough to remain calm. And um, for this, uh, I've always been doing a lot of sports. And I would say the third trick is um, <clears throat> just to enjoy the process. Because high performance can only happen if you enjoy the process. If you start to be in a fight against yourself or a fight against whatever your environment or competitors or whatever, you just your your performance will not be as high if you're just happy being here and deeply you feel that it's the right place that you're aligned with what you're trying to achieve then the high performance can come you've landed this job now you're an astronaut um why would you why why did you decide to do this job it's a very special job it's also a dangerous job um why so I think it all started as a little girl's dream, like sitting on the knees of her grandpa, watching the skies and, and uh, the sky and the stars, of course. But um, really, I didn't wake up one day saying I will be an astronaut. And I just went through um, very progressively. I read a lot of biographies. Um, the first one was Marie Curie, and I decided that I wanted to go for science and try to have impact on society through science, although it was very far away. And then the other trigger um, for, on, for me on this way was um, the biography of Claudie Agnoret, um, the first woman and, and also so astronaut from the European Space Agency. I was 14 years old when she took off and uh, it was really a trigger for me. I decided I want to go along this path. I think your grandpa as well was, uh, was in the Air Force, is that correct? Yeah, well, he was uh, right after the Second World War. He was a mechanic and he was telling me all the time stories about how we, he would repair aircrafts and uh, very often he inspired me because he would send me like newspaper article, newspapers article. He would um, put into That's an envelope right, yeah. and say, hey, look at this. Can you, do, what do you feel about um, going, going into this field or, or what do you think about this science field? And always trying to open um, the realm of possibilities for me, um, meaning um, he wanted me to, to have the curiosity of, um, of whatever possibility, because when you're a young child, you maybe don't imagine all the opportunities uh, that, that come in front of you. So yeah, he, he opened the realm of possibilities for me. And of course, you're a woman. You were talking about Claudia Nure, you were mm -hmm. talking about uh, Marie Curie. Uh, I guess that's also something that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's important. You are the second woman astronaut, French woman astronaut after Claudia Nure. Is that important to you? Well, um, so yes, being a woman is part of my identity, and uh, and but I, for me, being an astronaut doesn't have a gender. And my strongest wish, and I'm pretty sure it will happen, is that for the next selection, this won't even be a question. I mean, we the the European Space Agency is re already doing an incredible um, work for gender balance. Um, but I, I truly think that all the women who were selected as part of the 17 final um, reserve and career astronauts, uh, the women have incredible talents. And, and so it, it's not just a matter of gender balance, but just showing to people that, hey, whatever gender you have, you can have incredible talents. Yesterday also was announced the budget for the uh, for the European Space Agency, 16.9 billion euros, uh, 3.2 of which will be brought by France, who's decided to be the number one financer when it comes to the European Space Agency. Uh, some people say, what's the point? Why are we spending all this money? What would you answer them? Well, 
Space is everywhere in our lives. It comes from um, GPS, navigation, telecommunication, um, which are used both for telemedicine and teleeducation. Um, and of course, um, the environment, the climate change crisis. Um, space is here uh, first and foremost to help us mitigate all the risks of the climate change crisis. Um, there are satellites which are gathering data all the time 24 hour and uh, seven days a week to help deciders um, understand what's going on and there are also a lot of um, initiatives that are are possible thanks to space uh, to to mitigate this climate change crisis and we don't have much time left just for you. So you, you will be starting your training in April in, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Germany, in Cologne. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully you will have a chance to fly, but it'll take a few years, not before 2026, if I'm not mistaken. What do you, Sophia No, want to achieve? I need a pretty short answer because we don't have much time left. What is, the, what is your dream now? Well, I'm just doing my job and doing it happily. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, Sophia Adno. Uh, thank you uh, for being with us on France 24. Obviously, we will be following uh, your career closely. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned to France 24.